So there are a lot of people who are talking about the eclipse being like the day of the rapture, and I don't get a sense that any major shit like that is going to go down, so chill the fuck out. Nor do I think that that's going to happen on September 23rd. I mean, I could be wrong, it's just I'm not sensing that. And I told you that the, the rapture happened on July 18th on my birthday. And it did, that whole thing is really complicated. Like I've been asking for a really long time. Um, is there going to be a rapture? And I, at first I wouldn't get an answer and then eventually I was told, always the same answer, yes. But it's not going to be anything like you're expecting. And there are going to be multiple raptures. So the one that I experienced on July 18th felt like a singularity that was going to echo out. Um, and what happened on July 18th was that in a higher dimensional plane, enough of our oldest souls had awakened to remembering why we came here and what this place really is. Um, and that permits an opening of doors, a, a lifting of veils between dimensions. And it was the critical mass that I'd been waiting for for so long. Um, and when you reach critical mass, which I believe is 11% of consciousness, as it manifests in the 3D plane, like 11%, if you will, of the population having enough of an idea of what this place is and isn't to start a much wider awakening, like ripples in a pond. And if you're familiar with the hundredth monkey experiment, once you reach critical mass, then it allows for the entire population that's connected through like a quantum entanglement, um, through a shared consciousness, however you want to perceive it, it's all the same, you know, thing, just in different terms for the same thing. We're all interconnected. So when enough of us know, it opens the door for others to know. Now, when I talk about mass awakening, I'm not saying like everybody on earth is gonna be hip to the game. Like that's never gonna happen. And there are a lot of people here who are not, you know, souls of humanity. <laughs> they are, mm, sometimes you could call them projections of the matrix. You could call them demons or archons in flesh suits. You could call them bots or living AI. I mean, it's all kind of the same thing. They're just like, they're parts of the game, but they're not like real and they're never gonna wake up. Like that's not possible. As far as like the bigger game and looking at it from the perspective of Satan wants to win the game and takes many souls with him to hell as he can. You have to remember that Satan, pretty, the Demiurge, he doesn't hate me, not in the least. He honestly thinks that he loves me and knows me better than anybody possibly could. And it just turned into like an obsessive kind of thing. And part of my game is hopefully teaching him that that's not true. Um, but when it comes to other souls of humanity, he likes to trick people. And when people fall for his tricks and his lies and inversions and his hatred and takes everything that's good and, and makes it dark, when people fall for the darkness, he, he has no respect for them. He's disgusted by it. What he loves more than anything is innocence and purity of heart. Like, Satan has such a love for especially um, the cog people with like severe cognitive and intellectual deficiencies because to him they're innocent. Like there, I mean, there are people, populations, groups that are exempt from judgment. And that's one of them, which should be pretty fucking obvious, but anyway. So yes, he just loves innocence and those who who don't fall for his tricks. Now I'm not saying you're here to make Satan happy, like it's just uh, I, I want to enlighten people as to what he really is and he's a mirror. 
Like you fall for the darkness, he's going to be the mirror coming back at you, showing you what you did wrong. That's what this, the dark part of the apocalypse is, is just people having to come to terms with, with who they've really been. The hypocrisy that we all are a part of in, in some way, so that we stop projecting our insecurities and things that we're not ready to accept about ourselves into the mass consciousness. It's, he's not your enemy unless you make him your enemy. Same thing with Lucifer. Lucifer is ultimately the angel of enlightenment. And I got no beef, beef with my girl Lucy anymore. Like, I should get into that in another video, but it's perspective. And when you really start to look inward and know thyself and face your own demons and darkness, you realize the enemy was just within. There's really no external enemy. I'll make a part three, I guess.